All right, y'all. Today, we're taking a look at how to program the ICOM 2730A transceiver. We're going to be using Chirp for this, so let's check it out today on K5ATA Ham Radio. If y'all could do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe below. It helps the channel out, and it also helps new hams find our content. Okay, so after we've plugged in the radio into that speaker port on the back, open up Chirp, and the first thing you want to do is you want to download from the radio. Mine should be on COM4. Radio gives an audible beep. And the screen actually says clone out on the radio. And that's that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to... We are going to import some repeaters form. So if we go to repeater book, we're going to go to import from data source. Not query, but import. And we're going to do proximity query. And we'll start with local repeaters around here, Ooh, not 1.25. Well, we'll just dump them all in there. And we have those. This last one down here is our uh, DMR repeater. I actually, well, I can move those around. I'm just going to take all those in. Boom. And here we can actually change some of the channel names and whatnot. Now I know he's going out towards uh, to Arkansas for an off-road trip. This is that radio once again that was sent to us by Natural State Overland. So y'all check them out if you're into off-roading. It's a really, really cool way to make use of ham radio. So... Seven one seven one nine five three. Yeah, seven one nine five three. That's from Mena, Arkansas. I happen to know that's in the area because well, we honeymooned not far from there. Ate at the Pizza Hut many, many years ago. Okay, so to program this in, I'm just gonna hit boom. Import from data source. We're gonna look for proximity query, and I've already put in that seven one nine five three. We're going to do 100 miles because 150 is going to get them like 8,000 repeaters there. Okay, and you'll see it's going to try to start dumping these into spot one. Okay, and you don't want those there because, well, I already have stuff in spot one. So the way you control where they go is these down at the bottom. And I need to go plus one to make it go to 11. And then minus one makes it go to 10. And I'm just going to dump those bad boys in there and you can see they're all in there he now has 86 repeaters in there so several of them are 440 rep repeaters that's good okay um, after that we can open the properties and you can actually change the names of them I'm gonna put Oxford VHF because well I guess it won't fit them all Ox VHF that way he knows which one that is and I'll do the same thing on our 440 machine here Ox UHF Alright, so now we have repeater names in there. Now to write it to it, all it takes is radio, upload to radio. Alright, so there's the screen as she sits right now. And it's cloning, clone in, so it's writing the memory in there. Tells you a clone has ended. I'm betting we have to cycle the power here. And more. Alright. 
and here we have it so we now have repeaters in there by name okay so let's step through a couple of the settings we can program using chirp on this thing you can actually change the squelch delay um, I got the PTT so you can make it so they can't talk uh, transmitter timeout if you want to set that up so you know if you actually sit on your microphone it cuts it off after a minute or if you know somebody gets long-winded it cuts them off uh, you can change the microphone gain on this so you if you get reports of you know you kinda sound sound low in your audio you can change that there you can actually set this to when you start the radio to be a certain channel okay so in this case I'm gonna set his radio up so that I think it's where is the Oxford Oxford VHF is going to be his main channel there. So I'm going to have 5 and 8. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so now when he gets, when he t Brad turns his radio on, he's going to have his Oxford VHF and his Oxford UHF already up. Um, your display, you can change your, your backlight. Um, auto dim it so I'm not a big fan of auto dim you can change the contrast if you're having trouble seeing it in the sun or whatever um, opening message I guess that's where it splashes your um, how many volts you have and whatnot okay sounds it's just your beeps you can you know turn on or off beeps sub band mute now this is not turned on by default remember this is on this radio you can, or it, it's set up so that when you're getting traffic on one or you're talking on one, it mutes the other one. Okay, so you can change that as you like. Um, you can program to all of your microphone keys. Remember, this is the HM207 microphone, and it's got several keys in there that you can program to do what, whatever you want it to do. Uh, we won't get into DTMF stuff. Okay, some of these are weather alert. Okay, I wasn't aware of the fact I had weather alert. You can turn on weather alerts on this thing just by clicking there. Bluetooth. Um, I'm not sure if Bluetooth is actually installed on this radio, if that's an optional board. So, um, but whichever way that goes, you can, you know, enable it or disable it here. I think it's actually already installed on this thing. So to activate Bluetooth, you just enable it, and then you'd have to pair your stuff with it. Your Vox, and then this is for ICOM specific, specific stuff. Um, you can set up different scan edges and scan links. And then other settings here, um, you can clone these things. So, you know, if you, like for example, if several guys in the Natural Overland group decide to go with this radio, they could realistically program one and just clone all those bad boys, you know. So, and you can do that through the extended menu. Just plug them up and, and go. Um, it's got, you can turn on or off the auto repeater so that it automatically, you know, sets your duplex for you. You can change your default power. Um, Remember, technically, you're supposed to use the lowest power setting to facilitate reliable communication. But, yeah, okay. Um, his are defaulted to high. We live in Mississippi where it's a hike from one place to another. And, you know, you've got repeater, hang-up, timeout, stuff like that you can program. So, um, you can program a lot of the, the various settings in there. You can program your memory banks. You can set your memories into banks. I don't have his sorted into banks for him, but that's what it looks like. Um, so if you know he wanted to start going through here and saying, okay, well, this is my road trip stuff for the Wachita National Forest, he can put those into like bank two and call it, you know, Arkansas or whatever he wants to call it. So, but I'm going to leave those decisions up to him. So you've got a fair number of things that you can actually program um, 
using Chirp. He actually bought the uh, RT Systems cable and software, and yeah, I could install that software. I'm honest; I didn't want to install his software because I was a little bit worried about it using the key, and then you know he couldn't get it installed on his or something like that. So, um, besides, I prefer using Chirp anyway. RT Systems makes great cables. I've got a couple of their cables for some other radios, but if I can use Chirp to program it. I will always use Chirp to program it. Okay, and when we cycle the power, it gives us our message. And you can see it's got the two program channels there that I told it to set, Oxford VHF and Oxford UHF on his main and his subband. That's that. That's how to program the ICOM IC2730A um, amateur transceiver. His programming cable he got was an RT Systems programming cable, and it did come with um, some software in there. But honestly, Chirp is just so simplistic. I just I use Chirp. I like the fact that you can pull. Um, from the uh, repeater book directly and put them in there. So that's it. Um, any questions or anything, comment below. Hit like, hit subscribe. Like I said, like I asked, we do appreciate that. It helps the channel out. Y'all take care, and we hope to see you on the air. 7-3. Okay, so now that we've changed a couple of those settings, we're going to upload it to the radio. Radio. And there she goes. And you, I don't know if you heard that beep through this headset or not, but it is programmed and those settings are in there. So now cycle the power on that. Yep, and it's on Oxford VHF and Oxford UHF, so. Okay, and when we cycle the power, it gives us our message. And you can see it's got the two program channels there that I told it to set, Oxford VHF and Oxford UHF on his main and his subband. So that's it. Um, any questions or anything, comment below. Hit like, hit subscribe. Like I said, like I asked, we do appreciate that. It helps the channel out. Y'all take care, and we hope to see you on the air. 7 3.